Uh, can you stop screen share, Ellen? Ah. <coughs> These are the people that are watching. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> India. India. Okay. Hillary. Cheer up, Henry. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody. Oh, so yeah. we just... <laughs> All right. So, um... <laughs> all right. So, if everybody can hear me, I want to welcome everybody. Um, just some house rules. If the ones that are not talking could just mute themselves. Um, and also, please remember that you, um, if your camera is on, that your uh, back background is um, clear because we don't want unfortunate incidents that, that goes live on Facebook <laughs> as with previous ones. All right, so if everybody can just mute themselves. All right, my name is Michelle from Events Link Africa and together with my partners, um, which I'll introduce to you just now, we created this platform called InLink. Um, it was really to um, to introduce Namibian products to the rest of the world. And first of all, to our own team, but we thought, you know what, let's share the love and um, and introduce this this product to everybody else. And we had some amazing, amazing um, people online. And we, had, we came to this where we um, got the horse riding. And um, yeah, so I would like to, it, it is, it's an amazing product. So, and a good platform to be in. So I want to welcome you guys to this evening. Um, I want to welcome, first of all, um, Her Excellency Madam Linda Scott, uh, which is Namibian High Commissioner to the UK and Ireland. Um, I just want to see in the participants who is all in. Then I'd like to welcome and thank, thank you very much to my colleagues, uh, Marily Sarfontaine, uh, Sophia Lynx, uh, from Namibia, Joseph Kafunda, uh, Chris Koch in Cape Town, and then, of course, Helen and Andrew from Namibia Horse Safaris. And then, of course, I want to welcome my co-host, Janine and James from Ride Zimbabwe. So welcome to everybody. Can everybody hear me clearly? Everybody's really quiet. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I had the pleasure of meeting this amazing person, and we had a chat on, uh, on, uh, before this show started. Um, father of two, amazing guy, uh, amazing photographer, um, a writer, and then also the photographer to the Queen, uh, um, equine photographer to the Queen. So I'd like to say a very big welcome to, um, to Henry Delal. So welcome, Henry. We'd love to hear more about you and have a look at your photos this evening. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Henry, you're here in the UK. Um, so tell us a little bit more um, about just a little bit of background about yourself, how you, ca you came into the horse riding and the photography. Well, it's all my parents' fault, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, my mother uh, took me riding when I was nine, and my father gave me a camera when I was nine. And my, both my parents taught me, but shared the love of travel with me. And um, that's exactly the story right now. <laughs> ah, Carried on. That, that is fantastic. Um, I believe your mother is also with us this evening. Uh, Loris Delal is uh, Madam Loris. Um, welcome uh, this evening, and uh, thank you very much for supporting for supporting your son this evening. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen. Uh, first of all, I'm going to chat to uh, Janine and James before we introduce uh, your photography to everybody. Um, James and Janine Varden from Ride Zimbabwe. Um, you guys introduce us to the wonders of Henry Delal and his equine photography. Um, Henry would have been riding with you right now if it wasn't for the current situation. Um, and hopefully it's only been postponed. Uh, considering Henry's ability to experiment with photography, Janine, um, because there's always so much need for, for good 
equine photography. Uh, this must have been a huge blow for you. Yeah, Michelle, well, every, um, every safari that doesn't happen, of course, is a big blow. Yeah. Um, but you also have someone of her own caliber. It's a particularly uh, big blow. And, um, yeah, Henry's uh, equine photography and wildlife photography does seem to manage to capture some essence that um, we don't have normally or see, see a lot of. Okay. Um, Helen, could you kindly share um, the presentation with us so we can have a look at it? Janine, you guys, um, you guys recently did some local rides in Zimbabwe. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, as you know, we, there hasn't much been going on in the tourism world lately yeah. or, or anywhere in for tourism around the world. So, yeah, we've been in our little lockdown and um, we live on a dairy farm outside of Bulawayo. So our horses have been seeing, you know, dairy cows and donkeys and they're used to seeing elephants and um, buffalo. So, we, yeah, seven months off work or off safari we were sort of wondering how they're going to get on but um very happy to say that they just took it like the pros they are and uh had a look at a buffalo and just went on with business so we were happy about that how many people did you take on this tour uh the last trip we had we had uh five uh zimbabwean riders so we had a one uh, uh one uh, uh eventer and uh, Nigel Philp, who's a, a, a three-day eventer, and then we had uh, Sophia, she's a junior uh, Zimbabwean show jumper, and um, some of their family members. So, oh. but these good. photos are fantastic. This is really insane. Yeah, yeah this this was yeah from the, this trip uh, with the it was oh, James the big herd. Good. Yeah, big nice big herd of buffalo there <coughs> that we uh, rode up on, and um, fortunately the horses had good condition to dairy cows, so they weren't uh, worried about the buffalo, of course. Uh, there was a lot of giraffes, uh, we've got some elephants. Um, good uh, good wildlife there at the moment, yeah, being dry season, yes. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Um, just tell me, um, to, to, can we move on to the next slide? Because I really want to talk about your social responsibility project. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this. This is, um, actually, must tell everybody, we had the pleasure of interviewing um, James and Janine before, and so I have had privy to these slides, but it is such an amazing story. So please do tell us a little bit more. Yeah, this is an incredible um, success story about conservation and uh, a rural people that are living on the edge of wildlife areas. So basically, people have to, um, that are living in these peripheral areas close to wildlife, they need to feel there's a value for wildlife. Otherwise, it doesn't, you know, with, without communities, there's no conservation, there's no wildlife. So they have to feel part of it. So uh, this is on the edge of Matobo National Park. It's a, there's a lot of rhinos there, but um, uh, so these, a lot of history, lot of history mm -hmm. and uh, big, amazing granite out outcrops but the main thing about this is these people they're uh, re reviving a old tradition of painting the homesteads in with natural um, clay paint so all of uh, the painting that you see here is being done by just finding a natural clay paint there and then there's comp a comp competition which is at the end of August and uh, there's 800 houses that have been or villages that have been nominated this year and um, they'll be judged on their authentic Authenticity of the, yeah, <laughs> their painting, the natural of, of, painting. Of yeah. their painting. Okay. So this yeah. one here with the unicorn is um, apparently the unicorn, one of our grey horses, and uh, me in the uh, dress. Wow. <laughs> this is fantastic. Uh, James, I think you had, a, you had an interesting question there for Henry. Yeah, so... Um, Henry, we're just wondering, like, uh, with your amazing photography and everything, and uh, is it the travel that inspires your photography, or the photography that inspires your lust to travel? Uh, wondering which one sort of came first for you. That's a good question. Um, actually, it's it's the travel and experiencing life. The photography, to me, 
it's I just do it. And if I see good light, good color, good something, I get inspired and I take a picture. Even if it's even if I don't have a camera, I try to take a picture. So I guess it's well, you both go hand in hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I did ask uh, when I spoke to Henry the first time, and I said, you know, when you look at uh, when you look at the horses, you know, where does this come from? You know, what angle are you looking for, looking at? And, you know, just to get to know more. And he says, he looked at me and he says, Michelle, it comes from the heart, you know, which is, which is amazing. <laughs> so Henry, tell us a little bit about this amazing pictures in Oman. Um, well, I got invited and to, to be commissioned to go to Oman and uh, create a photograph and create a book on the Royal Cavalry. They have about a thousand, at the time, a thousand three hundred horses, which for me was amazing, very inspiring. Wow. And that was um, after I'd done the book on the Household Cavalry and then the Indian Cavalry. And of course, when you're in a new country, you don't. You know, I don't. I, I like. I don't want to stay put. I like to visit the country, experience the country, and what better way to go under the skin of a country than to have a purpose through photography for me. So that's how it came by. It was very inspiring. That is amazing. Um, Helen, that, could we, sorry, you had, uh, you had a question, Jay? Just what I said, that was an amazing photo. It looks like the guys are galloping on a, on a mirror. Uh, that, that previous photo, incredible, hey? Yeah. Um, can we still show, so see the screen? And they didn't run into me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Luckily not. <laughs> um, can, uh, sorry, can, uh, Helen, are you still sharing the screen? I'm unable to see the screen. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, this is an amazing picture, the horses in the water. Is this also in Amman? Yeah, this, this is also in Amman. I mean, every picture has a big story, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, Tell us of the data, this, and can you tell us a little bit more about the pictures? Because you're a great storyteller. <laughs> well, I, that, that particular picture, perhaps if we can go back to it, um, mm -hmm. was, I, I, I kind of imagined it and I wanted to make it happen. And I told the, 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 you know, the commander, the boss general, I said, I like to get these pictures, these horses to run alongside the beach. And he said, impossible, no way. Um, I then moseyed around a little bit and found somebody kind of, you know, uh, um, a lieutenant or somebody lower down, very low down, who looked after the stables. Yeah, no problem. So we tried it and we took 20 horses around uh, two kilometers down on the beach and we let them go. And it was real challenging of letting the horses go because you don't want them, it's not a race like a starting gate, yet you want a little bit of a mess, but you don't want too much of a mess because horses will run over their riders or their keepers. And then you want everyone uh, to, to let go of the, the horse at the same time. So all of this was taking place and we did it, but you only have the first um, few seconds or couple of minutes when all the horses are together and there's this explosion of water and, and, and spray. After a while, it kind of calms down and the horses are on their way. So you don't have much time. Well, we did it. Unfortunately, the lighting was wrong and I wanted, desperate to want to do it again. Next morning, I meet the general in his office and he tells me, yeah, I heard you got the, you, you did the picture. I said, you can't do. I said, yeah, but I'm not happy with it. He said, well, go tonight. I'll come with you with my camera and we'll do it again. So I felt encouraged, overconfident, and instead of two kilometers away, we went three kilometers away. And he's with me in his um, four by four along the sand and in his, in his vehicle. We get everything set up and we say, right, carry on, L loosen, let go of the horses. They let go of the horses, but the horses didn't go anywhere. Instead, <laughs> instead they turned around the back way and they started galloping towards the little town. Oh, 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 my, oh my God. These are... <laughs> uh, his Majesty, caught 
what am I going to do? I'm going to get in trouble. I just died. Fortunately, the tide was up and there was a tide breaker there. So the horses just hung around and eventually we caught them. So I learned the lesson again, trial and error. The next time we did it, we had somebody on horseback starting galloping off and then they released the horses and then the rest of the horses took off after the same lead horse. So that's how it, that's the story. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. And this, and this part to go? And together. <laughs> You're an amazing storyteller. Tell us about this picture. Well, well it's, it, it, I was in a, in, a, in, in a stable, mud bricks, mud stable, and so I just took it by chance. And it just, the beauty of this is the horse's neck and the way it's posed. There's nothing special about it, just the composition and the lighting. Um, I didn't plan it. I just saw it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, it actually reminds me of a unicorn. It must just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is taken in Pakistan. You have really traveled, uh, riding through the Hindu Kush mountains. Oh, and look, and these ladies are crossing the river. This is truly incredible. Tell us about this. <laughs> well, I was very lucky to be invited by some very good friends who I believe are actually watching this, but um, uh, they, they have this hobby of retracing the footsteps of somebody who played a role in British history somewhere in the world. And this was actually just before 9-11 in the Hindu Kush mountains. Um, and it was a three week trip on horseback, which just was out of this world. Um, and we went across the Shandur Pass, which is the highest polo, polo ground in the world, but it's polo the old, the original way where, you know, it's not like playing at guards, but it's playing, in, in, you know, I, I think there are eight to a team, very few rules, and there's always a drum beating. It's pretty yeah. fun. Wow. So you had background as well, so yes. set the mode, <laughs> set the tone, it's stunning. Oh, pass. Henry, I must ask you about, uh, I don't want to name drop, but uh, the photo on the top right hand corner, it's uh, the photo of a famous person. So uh, do you want to tell us who that is? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's on the big island in Hawaii. And mm -hmm. um, I was just taken to this beautiful ranch. Um, we were trying to photograph the original first quote unquote cowboys uh, that looked after the, uh, the cattle in Hawaii. After Hawaii, they came to America. But this horse belongs to Oprah Winfrey. That, wow. Uh, the TV presenter. Okay, and so it, tell it just, us how on earth did you get that picture? Was it before the horse belonged to her, or was it of you know we after she's? No, I knew it was hers, but um, <laughs> okay. he just started itching his yeah. self, and I thought, oh, that's a great picture, great angle. So yeah, yeah it's different. Yeah, yeah, and this amazing picture it's at the amazing. bottom, yeah. What is uh, you know even the horse has got the beautiful beads around it. She's yeah. she's yeah she's styled it a bit. <laughs> Tell that's us about that. <laughs> tradition Omani costume with a traditional Omani saddle, and um, they part of the part of the regiment. They have they they train their horses to lie down, which they used yeah. to do during war, I guess, in the old days. And so it's just it's very ceremonial, very very a lot of pageantry in it. That is amazing. And the top uh, the top photo. Oh, you're sorry, we've already moved on. And the top photo. That again is one of the offshoots of that image of getting the same away. one. Amazing, amazing photography. Thank you. This looks very interesting. Are we still in Omania? Or we no, this is Rajasthan. Okay. Um, our very first trip to India to do a horse safari by a friend. And um, that's my partner in the middle. And yeah, we were both smitten by India. And lo and behold, it resulted in many more trips um, and travel across India, which was wonderful. And it resulted in a book called Horse Warriors. Oh, this is really amazing. You know, see, this is why we've got this, this show, you know, so we all can see 
different parts of the world where to ride. Of course, we all want to bring you to Africa and Namibia. You know, that's the ultimate aim. But I mean, we're experiencing, you know, people can see all these amazing places. Um, we're just opening up the world to us through through your eyes and your lenses. So thank you. This is amazing. I mean, in Mongolia and China, I mean, it, I would never have even thought to have gone there. And these, these are stunning pictures. Tell us about your experience. Yeah. Well, it's 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 the grasslands um, near near the border of Mongolia, but this part is Inner Mongolia, and they they call it. There's over a million horses there, in that area, and very arid, very green, very few people who live there. And they, I was invited to go there and um, do some do a bit of photography, which was absolutely unique. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, they're trying to create an industry for mare's milk, um, which used to be a prized drink, mare's milk. And going back thousands of years to the days of Cyrus the Great, um, Genghis Khan, it was believed to be a very powerful source of, 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 of nutrition, drinking mare's milk. So wow. I had mare's milk beer. Well, make mm. beer for a milk. That's interesting. I yeah, think interesting. Hobbs and barley. <laughs> well, that is really interesting and, and strange, I must admit. Um, yeah. So this is a new thing that they're exploring. Well, they're trying to re bring back the industry. And, and I think they, they hired a Belgian, or Belgian company to make it into a canned beverage. They're wow. progressing. But all this was before this pandemic. I don't know of what's course. happening. Now. Yeah. So hopefully it'll start up again shortly after um, the borders are open. And yeah, we've got some action photography. You know what? You, um, I almost even didn't uh, recognize you or see you. You blend in so well. And then I realized no hands. <laughs> look, man, look, um, mommy, no hands. <laughs> well, the horse knows where he's going. He's probably correct. So I feel comfortable. <laughs> yes, this is, this is inside photo. So tell us about this. This is do, uh, doing part of the book. That's the 61st Cavalry um, in Jaipur. And um, again, all these pictures I'm using films. So you, you've got 36 pictures to take. That's it. So you have to really compose every image, not like the modern day digital era. Um, but yeah, it's when you're doing a book on something, you want to record as much as possible. Sure. Is this where you took all these action photos? Yeah, this was, again, all part of the same few years of imagery. How close do you get to these horses? I mean, this looks uh, like dangerously so. <laughs> I, actually, um, yeah, it is, it is, can, it is dangerous. I mean, it, it's not dangerous if, if you're just standing still and you've got horses coming at you. But then after I, you're hit, you know, I'm hidden, false sense of security, perhaps hiding behind a camera, um, which is all right, except when um, I wanted two, two rows of them attacking to me. The first row is the first picture you saw, but it was the second row that created that you had the dust already created. Yes. You see, the, the, the one on the bottom right is not that spectacular, but it's the second one where they're coming at you, but there's already dust in the air. So after we took this, um, and I had a friend with me there, she said, Henry, you, you know, I mean, the, the horse doesn't quite see you because there is a lot of dust. And all it takes is for one horse to, as they're galloping, butt over another horse, and they're coming at you with a, as you can see, with a sword right at you. So I felt maybe it's not such a good idea anymore with yeah. a sword. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, there was one of the previous ones, that one there at the bottom right corner. I mean, it looks like you're literally lying underneath the horse. I mean, <laughs> definitely a false sense of security there, but um, well done. Well, it's easy. impressive. And we're getting some comments here from the chat room. Everyone is saying what amazing photos these are, and, and we've got quite a few photographers. So congratulations on taking these. I can just imagine that, you know, the, the sound of the hoofs and the, and the dust, you know, it must, the atmosphere must be insane. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> All right, this uh, this sounds a uh, really scary suicide race. Tell us about this this race and and your involvement there. I was flying to Seattle to do a slideshow. I was invited, and on the way, about half an hour, half an hour before we landed in the airport, I'm reading the airline magazine that talked about this thing called the suicide race, which takes place the first weekend in August every year on the Colville Indian Reservation. And what they have is, what it is, is um, as a rite of passage, the, the youth um, have to go through, they do this race. And the race is comprised of riding, uh, literally taking off for about 100 yards and then literally flying down a 45 degree slope for 300 yards and into a river. And then they have to cross through the river along the uh, inside the river and then come to the finish line. Very dangerous um, and it's a rite of passage. So I was desperate to see this. And as soon as I landed in those days, uh, well, mobile phones weren't that prevalent. Um, I got a I got a change of a quarter and started making phone calls even before I cleared the immigrations to try to connect. And I connected with the head of this group. Uh, and I said, look, I'd really like to come and see this. He said, sure, come the day after tomorrow. And meanwhile, I have a slideshow. So um, <laughs> I called my host. I said, look, I'm coming. I'm doing my show. But I've got to leave immediately. And so that's what happened. When I went there, I just found it absolutely fascinating and scary, you know, just like the movies, how they do it. And I then asked, well, how, where do you get your horses from? And they said, well, we actually hunt them. Um, every, every young, every boy, every, every family on the reservation is entitled to hunt one or two what, what horses from the wild herds that exist a year. And I said, well, how do you get them? So well, we capture them, we go hunting for them. And we do this in December, in, in, in winter when there's snow on the ground. I said, God, I would really love to see it. They said, well, why don't you come? I told them, look, don't, don't tell me why don't you come? Because if you invite me, I will be there. And sure enough, six months later, I did go. And it was an absolutely wonderful experience to watch how they track the horse, the, the herd, and how the horses you're on just lay still and quiet and don't move, don't, don't, don't move a single twitch. And, and then suddenly, and they've sent a tracker to track the herd to have them gallop towards you. And at some point you hear the, the, the thundering hooves on the ground and the horses are now getting excited. And at some point, they take off to, to, to it's called chasing horses, to, to, ca to go gallop alongside the, the herd and with a lasso, try to get one or two horses. So here I am with my camera, galloping right behind them, trying to capture pictures. And it was a fascinating experience. And sure enough, um, that, that, after, that day we caught two, um, they then came, we had a lovely campfire in the snow, in a snow pit, in, they built a pit in the snow, had a little, little campfire. And uh, then they took the wild horse, um, you know, home to, in, in a big paddock or corral, uh, where the domesticated horses were. And it, for me, the intriguing thing the next morning was the interaction between the wild horse that has never been fed food before, has always, you know, grazed, and, and the domesticated herd. So the interaction to me was fascinating. And there, the little the picture there on the right is, is the wild horse, and the, the mares and everyone else is coming to just to sniff what's going on, get, make, you know, getting, getting to know each other. But the interaction was what fascinated me. Lovely experience. Sure, that is amazing. Sorry for that long story. No, that's beautiful. That's why we had to, to <laughs> meet you to listen to you. Yeah. yeah, we need the stories. We need the stories. <laughs> Actually, going back, to that, going back to that last photo, the guy out on the left, he's like got a, 
I'm not sick. sure it's tick or something with a white thing. What? What is it? You can't even take a selfie, was he? I think it's a whip, and as you see, they're wearing um, they're wearing uh, vests. But yeah. you, you know, it, the race takes play. It takes it's only three seconds, and it's over. Of course, you know, it's very short, yeah. very very short. But the preparation, yeah. the night before, the powwow, the they all dance, they all get together, they go around the the, the, the uh, you know the Native Indian chanting, and then. <laughs> And, and it's beautiful. Yeah. And on the day they paint the they paint their horse, and they, oh, wow. they do all kinds of things. And it's just fascinating. Again, pageantry, full on pageantry at its best. I love this. Yeah. Going through the, that yeah. water is incredible. That is amazing. That's beautiful. Yeah. Must be a good feeling to be on that horse going through that water, hey? Well, the good feeling is when they finish. <laughs> 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 All right, so what's it called? <laughs> Henry, to, yeah, any, <laughs> to anyone who loves horses and especially the pageantry involving cavalry, your images to the household cavalry and is a, are incredible. How did you manage mm. to get that close to take these images? Well, again, I got very lucky. Um, I got very lucky. I mean, I'm living in London and and here are these horses and I'm thinking, wow, how do I, you know, I've got to, you know, how do I get in? How do I fit in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess I got very lucky. I, I, I absolutely loved it. And, and so I started riding out a little bit and um, Oh, you know, I didn't start taking pictures immediately, but it took a bit of time. And then, you know, first you're taking pictures from 20 meters away and then two meters away. And then pretty soon you're completely invisible to everybody. And uh, so I had the uh, over six years to take some, hopefully some really good pictures. And then I went to create a book. And um, there was, I mean, my dream always was one day I'll retire and go away to a tribe and uh, live with them and take pictures and make a book. And then, but then it occurred to me, wait a minute, why should I wait until many years from now? Um, the household cavalry that are right next to Harrods living in, in, uh, in the barracks are very similar to a tribe. You have to win their trust, it's full of tradition, full of pageantry. And, you know, and I, I can do it on my doorstep. And there we did. That's how it all came up. Beautiful, yeah. That is amazing. Sorry, I forgot about our people. That's uh, our guest who is also joining in, and you guys are asking questions. And you know, we're so fascinated with the photos that sometimes I forget to look at the questions. Um, there was a, a question from Pat earlier on, and Pat, I think that was probably we left off in India or somewhere. I can't remember, Pat, but it was what lens are you using, Pat? If you can, uh, I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Um, and just uh, what, which which photo were you referring to? Pat? Oh yes, it was India. Okay. Thank you. Oh, was it India? <laughs> Hi, Pat. Lovely background. Um, sorry, can you just because uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna skip back and just go back to the questions. I almost forgot that we have guests. My apologies. Um, Henry, for the for the, for the lenses that you used for um, for India and then obviously cavalry. Um, can you tell us which lenses you are using? Well, as a rule, as a rule, I, I, I uh, don't want to be a slave to my equipment. Mm. The equipment has to be work for me and I don't need, I don't want to think about it. I just want to think about the moment and taking the picture. Um, so depending on exactly which format and where, it's either, uh, and, I, and I stuck to pretty much two or three lenses. Um, the, uh, 80 to 200 millimeter was my telephoto, um, or 35 to 70, which was most, the one I used most. Um, but that's it. And I, these pictures were all taken on, on transparency film. Um, if you go to the other picture, the, the one on the serpentine, this one here, um, this picture would have been um, 
you know, it's very rare to get the right light. It, it, I took it in October. It's a rehearsal for the state opening of the parliament, which to me is one of the most beautiful um, parades of all time in Britain, um, really. And um, this picture, the only thing that, it, 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 this could be 300 years ago. The only thing that dates it is the electricity in that lamp. Otherwise it would have been there wouldn't have been, it would have been, it wouldn't have had um, electricity at the time. But it's the same image from 300 years ago. Wow, oh, that's amazing. So I want to encourage everyone, if you've got questions, I know we've got a lot of photographers and horsey people on the show. So please, uh, um, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the chat room now. So if you've got your questions for Henry, please let me know. Um, so, yeah, so once again, I apologize. I forgot that you, yes, we saw into the pictures. These are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and others of, uh, okay, this second. Oh, so tell us about this. You are, um, these are different portraits uh, that you can explain to us now. And um, tell us about how you became the, the, the Queen's photographer or her equine photographer. Tell us a little bit more about her. And yes, we are all dying to know. Uh, we've got a few people here that are very um, fascinated with royals. Well, I mean, to begin with, I'm not the Queen's photographer. <laughs> I'm, one, I'm, I'm, I'm one of millions. <laughs> um, um, uh, except once in a while, I get I'm very I get very lucky and very honoured um, to be asked to come and take a particular type of picture. Most of them have always been around the horse, so I guess that's been the common bond. Um, and it's been a real honor and a real, real treat. So the picture on the top was one of my earliest portraits or pictures I did. This was the for the Golden Jubilee shot in 2002. And the one on the right um, was done for Her Majesty's 90th birthday, on the eve of her 90th birthday. Um, and if you look closely, you'll see the, the yellow daffodils match her, the yellow in her dress. And, you know, it's just the way it, it worked. But the, the interesting story is how do you get these horses to look good, at the, look the right way and have their ears perked? So uh, just so you know, there's somebody behind me jumping up and down <laughs> to capture the interest of the horse. And, um, of course made the queen laugh as well so <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like taking pictures of babies you know you have to jump in <laughs> well he was practically doing jumping jacks yeah yeah so listen uh, this is one of my favorite stories you know because i'm a big fan of this magazine so the horse and hound um you didn't specifically take this picture for this magazine though so um tell us a little bit more about that well, actually, this picture was taken a long time ago um, on a horse called Sanction and um, never did anything with it. And, um, uh, you know, it, it just was a lo lovely, lovely image, lovely. It's a very, it's a personal picture. This was never meant to do anything other than just, you know, take it for Her Majesty. Um, I then got a call in June that they're doing a special feature to on the on the favorite horses of the queen and it's been approved by by the queen and um so they asked me for to to bring to to use this particular uh this horse if i had a you know this this particular horse so that's how this came up it is one of her favorite riding horses it's called sanction um and the article itself included a few other favorite horses in the world of horse racing and other ponies and other other stuff but this was one of the best one of her favorite and i'm lucky that they use it as the, as the front cover that is amazing mm -hmm. um and then this picture has also got an interesting story behind it <laughs> well one day I, I was very honored to get a call to come and do some official portraits um but the scene had to use a a painting um of some significance and it had to be done inside Buckingham Palace. Um, and it, it's an official portrait of, for the household cavalry. Uh, as you could see, it's the, well, it's the um, lifeguards 
she's wearing the lifeguard uh, cloak. Um, yeah. And I thought, well, you know, I thought to myself, so one day I go and I had to do a recce um, to choose the right painting in the right room and we finally chose it. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm very comfortable taking pictures where there's a hundred horses galloping right towards you and you're in the middle of it. But to go and do a staged uh, picture with a painting in the back for me was quite daunting. I was, you know, technically. So, but still you have to compose. Um, so in, in, so I played around a little bit. And in, in this case, I had, um, I had the picture of George the sixth um, where he, his eyes in the painting is looking up to the queen. And so there's a, there's a line, there's a pattern, there's a nice flow of line, of vision. So we then marked, marked it on the ground with tape, everything. So when Her Majesty would come, she just stands there. I take the picture and it's done. So there's no faffing around. So that's how it is. We, we you know, just getting the right line in visual was, was, was my challenge. Um, we've got a question here um, before we continue. Um, uh, let's have a look. It says, Claire Cole says, I'm now a digital, digital photographer. As a fellow traveler, as with horses, I would have missed some very special moments. Have you ventured into the digital world? Henry? Um, I, I, have I? No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't. Um, it's just, it's just changed. It's just changed. I really preferred using film transparency, you know, 36 pictures per roll. You, you had to think, you had to compose your picture and pray to get lucky. And you don't know that until you actually process the, the film. Okay. With digital, and, and then, and then, I mean, it's just the spirit of the whole experience of looking at your pictures, looking at the, the whole thing has changed. There isn't much spirit in digital to me, but of course, you don't have to worry. You know, you can take as many pictures as you want, and it's just changed. Yeah. And you have to adapt. You have to, you have to adapt. So enough- all these pictures you're seeing almost all of them have been taken on film. Okay, and then I've uh, got a question from Johan Feltzman from uh, Phila Namibian. Um, Hi Henry, in advice on exposure metering for horses of different colors, it's sometimes find it, I sometimes find it challenging to get exposure correct, especially in events. Do you at all use modern cameras? And if yes, what is, what is currently in your bag? That's a good question. <laughs> I've got a Leica. I've got. Uh, <laughs> I've always been a Canon user. Um, I, I like the Mark IV uh, or Mark III 5D and Mark IV, which I use. And to be honest with you, um, since I have had a newborn a few years ago. By the time you take your, you know, I've, I've started using a lot mobile phone because, you know, by the time you get your big tel- camera out, you've lost the smile, the moment of your little baby toddler. So uh, mobile phones have, have done well in taking particular snapshots. And there's a, you know, there's a room for them. There's a role for them. Um, but nothing like a real proper camera that you can actually compose. Sure. And in terms of this, uh, in terms of the, what do you say, Johan, Johan's question, in terms of exposure metering for horses of different colors, um, any advice you've got for him there? Well, I mean, just really, I, I can't give an advice. Um, you, ha- you have to predicate upon the, the, the image and the light at the time, um, the, the, the colors. I, I wouldn't worry about exposure of the camera. Mm. I, I, I look more for the light from nature and the sunlight and how it's, how it's caressing the subject, the landscape, whatever it is. And then just use your best judgment and technical ability on your particular camera, on, on the exposure, on the speed, whether you want to do it, you know, 
uh, with one uh, twentieth uh, uh, or one fortieth, if you want to capture some action. It all depends on what you're trying to compose as an artist, as a photographer. Okay. I ho I, I, that probably doesn't answer your question, but be creative. Don't be afraid. <laughs> what do you say, Johan? Does it uh, answer your question? Johan? He's probably looking for the unmute button now in a panic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unmute button. No, I think it helps. Thank you very much, especially the side of just being creative and go for it. Yeah. What, why, where are you, Anne? It doesn't look like Namibia. It should be dark. <laughs> it is dark. Oh, okay. No, it looks well, like he's I'm, sitting I'm, in the sun. <laughs> I'm just well lit from the front. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> is it nice and cold? <laughs> it is a little bit chilly, yes. <laughs> All right, and um, Henry, you are also a um, a writer. Uh, although you said to me, Michelle, take off a writer. I'm not a writer. You're being too modest. Of course, you're a writer. If you write ten books, I think you you can call yourself a writer. Yeah. And I, I know Janine um, had a question for you about one of your books. Uh, I'm just going to quickly be up, jump in here for Janine. Um, just looking at this uh, this this image here. Oh. Henry, and thinking about some of your images before, uh, with those guys sort of charging straight down at you, um, and your equipment. I mean, this particular image is quite amazing. I mean, uh, this was done in film when you had film photography, wasn't it? Yeah. This uh, the horse warriors, yeah, uh, of Oman and um, in uh, the Indians. Yes, awesome. So, you, would you? Like, would you have had a, a, a tripod set up or you were just shooting off the hand? Um, and one of, one of the photographs, you were there with the, with the horse. You were riding on the horse. But I think being on the ground with all those guys charging towards you is pretty amazing. Um, I mean, would you just be shooting off the hand or you'd had a tripod, you had it set up and these guys knew their lines that come around you? I mean, like... Yeah, what were you doing? No, no <laughs> tripod. As I said, I, 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 long ago, I did not want to be a slave to equipment. I wanted to capture the moment. Yeah. So these are not shot on, um, on, on uh, tripod. The difficulty here was to get them to get wow. going, you know, at the right time with the sun coming up, because the sun is right only for a few minutes or a few seconds. And the beauty That's of this it, yeah. picture is the fact is the way the sun has lit underneath the legs of the horses. Yeah, but it's it's sharp. It is low light, mm. but it's sharp, sharp. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. You can see a lot of detail in there. Yeah. And that to me, yeah, I mean, were you just lying on the ground? <laughs> you no, not... I, I, here's another good story. Um, again, I, I um, thought of making a picture like this. Uh, again, this is in India, the 61st Cavalry. Okay. To get the message across to get all the horses together in a circle um, and me on the ground and having the lances all pointing in the right direction. Well, to begin with, I had all the horses kind of lined up without me on the ground where I then... I needed a flash. So I knew that um, if I suddenly throw a flash when I'm there, they'll jump up and trample me. So For sure, yeah. So I had them all um, lined up a little bit and I threw the flash 10, 15 times in their eyes, in their face. So they get, so they're not surprised. And then we got into, okay. then we got into this huddle and me on the ground. Um, the hardest part then was trying to get um, the, the guys to make sure that their lances are pointing exactly in one spot. Um, yeah. That was a challenge. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. But to be in that, I mean, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite, uh, you know, you'd, you'd think it almost get, something goes wrong, a horse books or something. Those horses are obviously amazing because, yeah, you could have easily have got trampled on, hey? Yeah. I mean, they must be so conditioned. Yeah. I must also say to go back to that picture because it's quite a, it reminds me of a family, you know, one is smiling and there's always one pulling a funny face. So yeah. you must have really enjoyed taking this picture. It is really incredible. 
I think I might borrow this for a family photo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got buttons from Namibia saying, well, you got a smile from the top one and a kiss from the bottom. <laughs> this is amazing. So, um, Tell us a little bit um, about your book, you know, your Horse Warriors book. Um, well, uh, every time I was, um, I went to India a few year, quite a few times over a few years. And every time I go there, I'll try to venture out a little bit to experience more of India. Um, one of the things on the previous picture was the, um, was the, the, they have a horse market in Nagore where everyone brings their camels and their horses over three days and they trade them. And it just was a scene of like, could have been a thousand years ago. Just such a wonderful experience from, from just to be walking at dawn amongst all these traders with their horses and their, as they're waking up, it was fascinating. Um, and then I, the next slide, the next page, I came across the Nihang warriors. Uh, the Nihang warriors are a nomadic tribe, again, very s full of pageantry. Um, they're, they're, they're a sect of Sikh, very religious, and um, they're warriors. They carry their sword wherever they go, and they're um, fantastic horsemen. Um, and they have these festivals where they all gather and they they part of their thing is they perform pageantry with their horses their their swords and it's a sacrilegious ceremony and nihang is is a is is their name but it's a persian word for shark or for whales so okay. a lot of that influence okay. wow interesting why whales i don't know <laughs> Great answer. You're quite a long way away from the coast, surely. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so James, you had some questions with regards to um, Henry's photography in Africa. Yes, yeah, so we've um, been there with you guys. Hey, you, if you've been to, you've been riding with them and them. Not. not not yet. He was meant to be, uh, oh, meant yes. to be. But okay, then, okay, that's good. Uh, he's yes. still coming. He's uh, not forward. cancelled, yeah. postponed. Postponed. Yeah. Um, no. So Henry, um, Africa is, uh, has has been is known for its very very special light, uh, luminescence, uh, very amazing photographic sort of quality, and um, so yeah, you must really be looking forward to to getting back. To Africa and certainly getting on, on back on a, a horse in Africa and riding and getting some amazing photography and uh, and using that light. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you'll be coming soon. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, Africa to me always conjures up a spirit of great adventure and it stirs my heart. And as many, as much, I just love spending time in Africa. And when you tell me about Hwangi and, you know, Victoria Falls and Okavango Delta and all the, you know, all these places, look, it's a patchwork. I got to make a lot more trips and spend a lot more time, but it really excites me to come out and just experience the countries, the culture, the nature everything yeah. and and i have to say i've never heard about horseback safaris before um I'm, okay I'm about i'm going back over 20 years and one day some friends came from colorado and they told me they just come back from a horse safari in africa and i said yeah tell me about it how does that work they said yeah i mean can and they just told me a story that they had experienced and they said look can you imagine you know being on a horse going next to galloping with the giraffes galloping next to the zebra galloping next to the you know the the the, the buffalo because they, they don't care about the horses you can actually get close and you're going along the same speed and that conjured me such an excitement that's wow i have got to experience that so yeah so I, henry what's um so if you, you you're on a horse 
and there's one of these situations here on, on, on with an elephant herd or a bull elephant in front of you there. What, I know you're not a slave to your equipment, but what would you carry? You obviously you can't carry a lot of kit on the horse. So what camera body and what lens or what well, again, lens the would same you thing. wish um, to carry? Something as simple, you got to keep it simple. Um, yeah. You have to keep it simple. Uh, um, you don't want to faff around. You want to keep it, as I said, you don't want to, I don't want to be a slave to equipment. You no. have the discipline to say, right, this is what I'm using. And, um, you know, I'm going to take it. By the way, the picture, yeah. the, the picture before where you have, you're right in front of an elephant that's about charging you. Wow. Uh, Look at that. That's a scary picture. No, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that also has a story. Please. <laughs> yeah, no, but this mare, particularly, Janine can talk, talk to you about the mare, but this, um, there was two bulls who were young bulls who were playing in a pan in a water hole in Wangi, and, uh, the, and the horses, yeah, well, the, the, the elephants had never seen horses, but they were just remarkably calm and relaxed with us. They couldn't smell us. Eventually, that, those particular bulls walked within about uh, 30 feet of my mare and I. Uh, completely unfazed. It was amazing, an incredible experience. Yeah, but Janine can tell you about that particular mare. She was she was fantastic with with the elephants. Scary. Very, very, uh, in my personal opinion, <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> the best safari mare in Africa. She was so brave, and nothing fazed her. She could literally she could track lines. She and put her nose to the ground, and she could track. She would tell you if there was a lion there. She would like doing start doing. We call it the impala snort, but like a, and that was like there is something around here. You need to be aware of. Wow. Of that. Or stamping and stamping her foot. That uh, something was not. She wasn't comfortable with something, and sure enough, there would be something that you needed to look for <laughs> was in close proximity. To the media online, not the TV. Yeah, yeah, she, she came from a great line of uh, yeah. thoroughbreds in Zimbabwe, and she, yeah, she won the best horses we've ever had the pleasure of of owning, and we have a few of her descendants. Yeah. Wow. She just said in eight, you know, you talk about your horses that go on safari with dangerous game. Of course, you know, for them, it's they want to run. You know, horses they want to run away. Yeah. So for them to, try, it's a whole thing of conditioning your horses to gain that if they trust you, then it's a big thing when you're going up into approaching elephants or there's lions or, you know, if they trust you and you've got trust in them, then yeah. Works well. It, it yeah. Works, it works yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, You'll come and experience yeah. that yeah. sometime. Jane, that, this is incredible, uh, James and Janine. I mean, uh, how close do you guys get to the elephants? This is really an unbelievable photo. Yeah, well, in, the, in Wangi, like in the open, if you look at the one bottom left uh, photo there, um, you know, there's very open areas there. The horses are relaxed. They can see the elephant. The elephant can see you. They, they, as long as you, they can't smell you, you're not um, giving a wind to them. Um, they, they just see you as another another animal and and and, and um, you can ride amazingly close yeah safely you know particularly like if you've got the water hole between you and the, and the elephants they're drinking they're relaxed the horses are relaxed um yeah you can get to within you know 10 20 meters um of bulls the cow herds you're not going to go get so close because they've got babies but um yeah it's, it's an amazing experience and the horses get quite quickly get used to those animals and they get good relaxed with the with the elephants yeah and it's all about trust it's we don't want the horses to be in a situation where they feel threatened where they're getting charged or mock charged by animals because then they get up, up tight and they don't want to go and approach those they don't want to be put in that dangerous situation so we never try to put our horses yeah. in that situation yeah, no, yeah. Never, never push it intentionally no. Yeah. Of course, yes, yes. And I think Very also natural. being on the back of an animal, it's different than to being in a vehicle, you know. So um, the animals Very are different. obviously comfortable. Uh, yeah. Makes a huge difference. Absolutely, yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and even I'm like gonna... in that photo there of riding yeah. with a giraffe. I mean, you can get right amongst giraffe, and that's quite incredible because you know he's huge, tall animals above you, and uh, you're on a horseback. It's 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 awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's... And then of course the lights with photography, yeah. winning combination. Yeah, well, we've got lots of photographers uh, listening in, and I am and part of our guests this evening. So we, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of um, a lot of new clients, and we will also be sharing your information on our Facebook page. You know, for anyone who wants to know for next year what you guys are up to. Um, the same for Namibia. You know, in the beginning, what I was trying to say when I got so tongue tied because I got such a fright when we started, and I was letting people in the room. So what I was actually trying to say, what this platform is meant to do. Is putting people, you know, keeping tourism alive because people are in a in a situation where I think everyone is so so negative and and by sharing these beautiful stories and experiences we we give a little bit of hope. It's like a feel good share and um, introducing each other and connecting Namibia and Africa with the United Kingdom, with Europe and and the rest of the world. So this is a really great opportunity. So uh, thank you very much for that and uh, congratulations. You've got stunning products. Uh, I mean, I'm in love with it. And uh, we've got a few people already said, listen, um, incredible stories and they've all got new uh, bucket list checks. So yes, so everybody's love it. So, um, quick question. I did ask you this question um, on the previous one. Do you uh, also cater for beginners or must they already be um, intermediate riders? Um because we've got the dangerous wildlife and that that you're riding with in those big areas a lot of cantering uh you've got to be a a, a strong uh, intermediate or okay. experienced rider yes okay. uh, All right. because you know, you're doing also you're doing long hours in the saddle uh, mm -hmm. i mean in some days you know some of the safaris not just with us but in namibia also mm -hmm. you know, you're doing many hours in the saddle so you've got to be riding fit and uh, ready okay. for seven eight hours perhaps um so yeah you've got to be Confident, confident rider, um, experienced rider, yes. Okay, so um, Madam I Commissioner Linda, you and I, we are going to start with our, uh, some classes here in England. <laughs> All right, then Henry, <laughs> back to you. Yeah, we, we're going to come prepared, don't worry. Uh, Henry, back to you. So uh, we want to know, uh, you've been to our hometown, you've been to Namibia before. Um, some stunning pictures. Um, not riding yet, I believe, but Namibia Horseback Safaris, um, they do amazing trips, so we're going to definitely invite you back. But tell us a little bit about your trip to Namibia. Well, <clears throat> I was really inspired to climb this thing called Spitzkopf Spire. I didn't know much about it, saw a few pictures, I had, and uh, in the days that I could do it without responsibility. So I flew down to, <laughs> to, to Cape Town and from Cape Town made my way to Windhoek, rent, got a car and drove. Somehow I met up with a climbing partner and we climbed this lovely, lovely mountain, um, lovely rock face. And it just was stunning because every, everything around you is absolute flat. And then um, you just, this kind of spire comes right out. And of course, beautiful, beautiful landscape. I couldn't believe how huge the country was. I tried to make it to Sosusle, and I just couldn't believe the, the, how, how long it would take. Um, and then of course, going to Swakopmund was quite fun to relax and have a beer after the climb. I enjoyed it. It was a good experience, really yeah. lovely. And well, it's, a, it's a beautiful, and I, you know, the landscape, the trees, it's lovely. It's a photographer's dream. So we are going to put some photography tours together. And um, Namibia Horse Safari said their products will also be available for everybody to see soon for 2021. But you are definitely invited. Um, we want those beautiful pictures to be displayed of Namibia. So, um, the reason we also we've got the show, you know, is to um, to yeah. just the wild horses of Namibia. Mm. So we've got a foundation, um, just some pictures and stuff. 
So, you know, uh, the foundation is just because, you know, to, to um, get them some food and the foundation is there for, because we had a terrible drought and uh, going on, but we are going to contribute a, a special, um, a special uh, show for this, for this uh, wild horses um, with that which you'd like you to be part of. So uh, we are actually, I'm going to do it on a different show, but I want everybody in the meantime to go on to, um, on the Facebook page, Namibia Wild Horse Foundation, to read it a little bit more because we've got a special guest coming in the next weeks to come. Mm. Um, if there's, uh, the, we've got so many thanks to you, wonderful, dearest Henry, Henry. Thank you. Cannot wait to return to Africa. So, um, you know, you've shared with us your your life stories, your beautiful, beautiful pictures. Um, you're an amazing person, and and thank you so much for also um, saying and. and offering that you will contribute or assist us we need it you know to make appearances on the show to help uh, draw uh, um, attention to the Namibia wild horses and and the foundation so we really really uh, would love to host you in Namibia soon and uh, that's such a cute pic we actually met your little boy yesterday and <laughs> and in Zimbabwe and Namibia, but in, in the whole of Africa, because we've um, on our previous show we met uh, people from uh, from the association, which is from Kenya, Botswana, Mozambique, um, and yeah. as far as Argentina. So yes, we will definitely create opportunities. Um, okay. And Eden, if you can stop sharing that I can see everybody's faces <laughs> <laughs> just to say thank you and then from my team and I thank you to everyone who always support the show you know to come to learn more about Namibia and Namibia's products and then about horse riding safaris and then and this is a really great a great opportunity for us to introduce you to the equine world and celebrities or equine sorry I pronounced it incorrectly or um obviously attract more tourists, but also ideally um, support this Wild, Wild Horse Foundation. So thank you very much, Janine and James. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. Um, from Helen, who created the slides for us and putting endless time in. Yes. Um, thank totally. you so thank much. Helen. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So, so, so Thanks, Henry, yes, we look forward to seeing you. And everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Please keep uh, an eye on our social media pages because we've got lovely surprises coming up for the next few weeks, which we can't wait to share with you, but it's a secret yet. So um, have a wonderful evening and thank you so much, Henry. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. You guys right. have thank a wonderful everyone. evening. Good night. We'll see you next right. week. Thanks, everyone. Good Good night. Night. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Really fabulous. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Warden. Thank you. That was just amazing. We'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, be riding again soon. <laughs> yeah. We will be, you yes. Be. You <laughs> Absolutely. You better be. We want, yeah. to come when can, we want to come when Henry comes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. You've got a new following, yeah. what did I tell you? So we're going to be posting those pictures on our Facebook page. So keep on supporting us. Thank you so much. So <laughs> I, would like, I would like to make one, I'd like to make one concluding comment. I've written, <laughs> we've written several times with James and Janine, and the riding is absolutely amazing. And sadly, James rides with a very, very little penknife. <laughs> <laughs> No. I thought you were going to say with a pony there for a second. <laughs> oh, you're a bench. Yeah. I don't think, I don't, only maybe Janine has written with James as much as, as I have. Oh. And he normally says, he normally doesn't put bullets in his gun because he says those are dangerous. <laughs> Very. Far too dangerous. Right. Yeah. What, what is the story of a small pen knife? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I think I think it's that's probably. a campfire story. That's a yeah, that's a campfire story. Yeah, <laughs> Carl, Carl, we have to tell you a story about Carl, but you know it's just sad, too, too sad.
<laughs> yeah. then we, when we in Wangi and we're there riding together, I'll tell you the story. I'll tell okay. you the rest. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the story and I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Right, lovely guys. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.